Hi guys, today we are going to be talking about this structure in front of us and as you can see, yes, this is our respiratory organ, the lungs and with me we have the two lungs although for different individuals so this is our left lung and this is our right lung. Now how did I identify my left lung and my right lung without even looking at the lobes whatsoever? Here is the gist. Our right lung has three lobes, our inferior lobe, our in middle lobe, and our superior lobe. Two fissures, oblique fissure and horizontal fissure. That's our right lung. And our left lung, on the other hand, has two lobes, inferior lobe and superior lobe, and a single fissure, which is our oblique fissure. So how then was I able to identify my lungs without using these lobes of fissures? Well, I used the ilium. There are two ways you can identify the lungs from the ilium. You can either use the bronchi or you can use the ilium itself. So what do I mean by the ilium itself? By the ilium, I mean the shape or the direction of the ilium. So this structure here, when you would realize that when I was trying to identify the lungs, I did my hand this way. So me doing my hand this way implies a number nine. And what does it stand for? This is the right lung. So whenever you see a lung and there is a number nine on the ilium, this is the right lung. However, for the left lung, it's like the mirror image of the right lung. So what is the mirror image of nine? Exactly, P is the mirror image of nine. So this is letter P, letter P, and that is our left lung, and this is number nine, which is our right lung. So apart from that, we can use our normal characteristic feature to identify it. So three lobes, two fissures, two lobes, one fissure, now let's go to the ilium of the lung in case we don't want to use number nine and letter P to identify our right and our left lung respectively. So as our ilium of the lung, the way the structures are arranged vary. So for the right lung, the, we have from superior to inferior, superior to inferior, we have two bronchi, one artery, and several veins. Sometimes you can have several arteries depending on if the arteries have started branching and several veins also because the veins will have started branching and of course we have to put nine veins. So right, this is our two bronchi. This is our artery and yes our pulmonary artery. You can see the lumen. This is our pulmonary artery. This is our pulmonary artery. And we have two veins, pulmonary veins. We have this one here and we have this other one. So this one here is a superior pulmonary vein and this one right here is the inferior pulmonary vein. So now let's list all the structures in the way or in the order in which they go. So here is our bronchi, we have artery, then we have bronchi again, then we have vein and we have vein. So that's where it goes. Bronchi, artery, bronchi, vein. Bronchi, artery, bronchi, vein. Now this bronchi, because you, they can probe this area, and as a what structure is probed or what structure is pinned. So we can see this, this right here. This is our epithelial bronchi, epithelial bronchi. They can also probe this structure, this other one. This is our hypothelial bronchi, hypothelial bronchi. This is our pulmonary artery. This our pulmonary veins. So this is superior pulmonary vein. If they probe this area, you can put in brackets superior, but it's safer to write pulmonary veins in case you are not sure whether or not it's superior or not, because sometimes they can look beside each other. So this is our superior pulmonary vein. This is our inferior pulmonary vein. Bronchi, epithelial bronchi, pulmonary artery, epithelial bronchi, superior pulmonary vein, and inferior pulmonary vein. And that is our right lung. And do well to always feel the texture of this structure. The bronchial is the thickest because it has cartilage. It is the thickest. It has cartilage. When you touch it, you'll be able to feel that, oh, this is the bronchial. Then you will decide whether it is hypothelial or epithelial, depending on which one is above the other. Now this is our left lung, the ilium of the left lung. We might not be able to see the bronchi from the archive, but then this is our bronchi, it's the thickest 
amongst all of this. I know you will not be wondering that, okay, why is this year and why is this year? Why, why is this year? It's not the same as the right one. Yes, it is not the same. So how do you differentiate in terms of the bronchi, the right from the left wrong? Is that bronchi? The right lung, the ilium, it starts from bronchi, from up, down. We have the bronchi, artery, bronchi, vein. That is the reason why I said it that way. But in the left lung, starting from up, down, we have the artery, bronchi, vein. Artery, bronchi, vein. So this right here is our pulmonary artery. As you can see, it's well expanded. It's already divided, and that is why. So this right here is our pulmonary artery. This is our principal bronchi. As you can see, it's just a single lumen. But then it divides into two secondary bronchi when it goes inside. And this is our pulmonary veins. Again, we have two pulmonary veins. This one, superior pulmonary vein and inferior pulmonary vein. Two veins. This and this. So that is our right and our left tongue in terms of ileum. We should also take note that we have several surfaces of the lung actually, and we have several parts. And sometimes you can the structure can be put on the table and you can be asked that okay, what surrounds or protect this structure? It is a plural. Plural, basically, it is a plural. So, depending on however the question is, be sure to know about the plural because they can ask, they can paint this area, this area, and ask that what part of the parietal plural surrounds this area that's the cervical part because this is the upper part, and so on and so forth. Impressions on the visceral surface of both lungs. So, we'll be starting with, or rather, we'll be doing the both of them alternatively. So right long, left long. Of all things, even though we don't remember anything at all, I want us to remember the ilium, what arch over the ilium. If we do not even remember anything, it is, it is often asked in simple chase what arches over the ilium of either long, right? So here, because this is our right long, this is our arc for a zygos vein. Our arc of a zygos vein arches over the ilium of the right long. However, on the left side, we have our Arc of the aorta arcing over the ilium of the left lung. Arc of the aorta. Arc of a zygos vein. Arc of the aorta. Let's talk about the um, cardiac impression and the cardiac notch. For the right lung, it's called cardiac impression. For the left lung, it's called cardiac notch. And why is it called cardiac notch? This is just basically a space in the left lung that you know, contains the cardiac or the heart, a part of the heart. Now, on the right lung, this is our cardiac impression. This right here is our cardiac impression. And you can, this place can be painted and you can be asked that, okay, what part of the heart does it, does, puts an impression on this part? It is our right atria. So cardiac impression for the right atria is on the right lung. While the cardiac notch on the other hand, it is bigger and larger, and you can also be asked that what accounts for the impression of the, or what part of the heart accounts for the cardiac notch on the left lung. It is the left ventricle. So this is the left ventricle. This is the right atria. Right atria, left ventricle. That's now that we have done that. Before we go to other um, structures, I just want to quickly identify something that is often asked. And this structure here, we can see how slimy it is and tongue-like it is looking. So this structure, which is tongue-shaped or tongue-like, is called our lingula. Lingula is a, is a characteristic picture present in the left lung. So it can be tight, it can be pinned, it can be, anything can be done to it, they can pop powder on it. So this is the lingula of the left lung. So that just basically is lingula of the left lung. Now other relation on the right lung, since we have our arc of azygos vein here, mind you, the azygos vein goes downwards, like it extends downwards. This area can be painted, and this area is our esophagus. So this is our esophagus. Usually, it's not always the azygos vein they are asking for. It is usually the esophagus vein because the um, painting will be very large, so it's always like the esophagus. And now, the esophagus extends upward, right? 
it extends upward. They are, the arc of a zygote's brain is passing behind the esophagus. So, esophagus is in front of the arc of the zygote, it's more like something like this, right? So, this area is also esophagus. So, here, esophagus, here, esophagus. Then, in front of the esophagus, around this area, in front of the esophagus, this esophagus, this esophagus, in front of the esophagus, which is here, you will have something like this. If this is my esophagus, then this is my trachea. So in front of the esophagus, we have trachea. So this right here is trachea. Now I want us to know, I want, us, I want to give us a trick to identify other structures with respect to the heart. Now this is the heart, cardiac impression for which part of the heart is the right atrium. Now if you have your right atrium here, what are the two things draining into the right atrium? Two, major veins draining to the right atrium. We have the SVC and we have the IVC. So SVC is coming from the up, IVC is coming from the down. So this area, if this area is painted, this is the area for IVC, impression for IVC. And if this area is painted, this is the area for SVC. This is right atrium, IVC, SVC. Then a little above the SVC, we have becocephalic vein. This is the SVC and it's formed by two veins the left and right brachiocephalic vein. So at this region, we have the groove for brachiocephalic vein. The groove for brachiocephalic vein. It is safer to just write brachiocephalic vein since either of them is forming it, right? So if this area is painted and SBC is there, above it is brachiocephalic vein. So let's go over what we said again. Half of his zygos vein, esophagus, esophagus, trachea, SBC, brachiocephalic vein, IBC, right atrium, right atrium. Then a little around the apex, close to the trachea, a little about this place, is our groove for subclavian artery. A little about this region is our groove for subclavian artery. So here's our groove for subclavian artery. And this area can be painted. This is the groove for the first strip. Groove for the first strip. So first strip, subclavian artery, esophagus, trachea, brachiocephalic vein, SDC, right atrium, IVC, esophagus, arc of zygos vein, and zygos vein. So that's basically all the impression on the right lung, on the mediastinal surface of the right lung. And this is our diaphragmatic surface, which is an impression for the diaphragm. To be specific, the right cupola or the right dome of the diaphragm. So, now let's go to the impression on the left lung. <laughs> Like I said, the major thing we should first take note of is our arcs, which is actually over the ilium of the lungs, of either lungs. So here on the left, we say the arc of aorta, right? So this is our arc of aorta. So if this is arc of aorta, it's going to come downwards, right? So arc of aorta, then we have descending aorta. Arc of aorta, descending aorta. Then in front of the arc of aorta, here we have our esophagus. So esophagus here, Descending thoracic aorta here. So this place is painted, and you have specifically identified whether it is the right lung or the left lung. If it is the left lung, then this is the descending aorta. But if it is the right lung, it is what? Esophagus. Now, in the upper part, we have a groove here, which is a groove for trachea. Majorly, it is trachea, but then together with the esophagus. Sometimes it can be together with the esophagus, but majorly it is trachea. But you can as well write trachea and esophagus. So here is good for the trachea and the esophagus. Of course, esophagus behind, trachea in front. Then we have in front of that one is our group for subclavian artery. Just as we have group for subclavian artery on the right lung in front of the trachea, we also have group for subclavian artery in front of the trachea on the left lung. So this right here is our group for subclavian artery. And in front of the group for subclavian artery, we have our group for left brachiocephalic vein. So here is left brachiocephalic vein, here is subclavian artery, and here is trachea and esophagus. Esophagus behind trachea in front. This is descending aorta, and this is esophagus, up of aorta, and this is our cardiac impression for the left ventricle. Thank you.
and that's basically all for the lungs. So take note of your ilium, take note of the area they can paint. This is our lingula. This our, they can paint this area, they can paint this area. On the right lung, it is the sophagus. On the right, left lung, it is descending aorta. They can paint this area at which part of the heart is specifically putting the impression there. And that is our left right atria, and this is our left ventricle. Not the weight of the lung in both male and female, and the ilium, the P and the 9. P for left lung, 9 for right lung. And this is all. Bye for now.